I got hypnotized oh. and it was crazy. I got hypnotized like on stage and I just like magic is dope. I came out, came out junior year. Um, why I say this is because I was never like, I never had like this huge extravagant story or anything. I just tweeted and I was like, I think I'm gay. After the TED talk, I got, I started getting asked to speak at schools. After that, like a month of that, I was over it and I wanted to make music. This is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with another Lauren. Hey! Lauren Sanderson. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Sanderson. <Yeah. laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> so you were born in Indiana? Born in Indiana, yeah. I just moved here like five months ago. Oh. Six? I, I'm a ba I'm like an LA baby now. <laughs> Are your parents from Indiana as well? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And when you were young, your dad used to like film everything, right? Literally everything. There's hours and hours of footage from when I was a kid literally mm -hmm. hours and yeah it's cool there's a bunch of CDs and he just kind of kept everything like I don't know why who what when where but I'm super <laughs> grateful because now it's just cool to look back on yeah. those moments yeah what do your parents do uh, my mom is a nurse and my dad he's actually a coach for um, real estate stuff Ooh. and and um, He's, he's like a motivational coach, kind of, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Where do you think you got your creative side from? Man, probably a little bit of both, because, I don't know, both my parents really, like, as I was a kid and growing up and everything, like, both of my parents really, I don't want to say, I guess they just, like, really paid attention to my weird side, mm -hmm. like, just being a weirdo and being, like, my own person. Both my parents just never pressured me to be normal. Mm -hmm. You know, they were always just like, she's the crazy one, she's the weird one. So then I was always like, just learn to embrace mm -hmm. the, the weirdo stuff and creative stuff. What are your parents' personalities like? My mom is very goofy and funny and uh, she's very like cute. <laughs> and my dad is very respectful. My dad is very like entrepreneur and leader and stuff like that so my mom I think gave me like my quirkiness and like I don't know really what that is but my dad definitely gave me like my business side and mm -hmm. like my love for entrepreneurship can I cuss yeah okay, no. <laughs> okay. What kind of music were they playing in the house when you were growing up uh, my mom was playing a lot of I'd say like a mixture of like country and hip hop. Um, like I grew up in Indiana, so like Keith Urban, mm -hmm. Faith Hill, Tim McGraw. And then I, I also heard my first hip hop album with her, which was Sierra's album, My Goodies. Oh my God. Yup, so changed good. my life forever. <laughs> um, and then on my dad's side, he played a lot more like alternative and I don't know, like. I can't really remember. I feel like he just like played the radio, like rap, hip hop type stuff, pop maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he like school growing up? No, I hated it. I hated everything about it, honestly, except for like seeing people. And yeah, I had really bad grades too. I did not I like this. This is a nice interview. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had really bad grades. I just don't have the type of personality to like sit in a desk and just like be talked at. I don't mm -hmm. really like that. What were you doing in your free time back then? Um, I wrote a lot of poems when I was growing up and which later turned into rapping and um, I don't know I've always like ever since I got my license when I was 16 I've always just driven like all the time I don't know why it's just like it's a hobby mm -hmm. just driving and playing music super loud um, yeah and just telling stories just like I always knew I always knew I was gonna be a musician not not a musician but like I always knew I was gonna be a leader mm -hmm. so I've just done everything I can to make sure that I'm just preparing. Yeah. You wanted to be a magician when you were younger? Yes. How did you know that? <laughs> I know everything. Do you? <laughs> did you do your research? Yeah. All right. I see you. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to be a musician. I went on a cruise when I was like 15 or something and I got hypnotized oh. and it was crazy. I got hypnotized like on stage and I just like magic is dope. Well, did they tell you to, what did you do on stage? Like, did they, they, um, they like, first of all, they hypnotize you and like put you to sleep basically. And then it's like me and like 20 other people or something. And then they like would tell you like you're a Abercrombie model and this is your runway yeah. and like stuff like it's that so and crazy. like I literally did it. It was crazy. All of us did it. Looking back at the video, like they would be like, I think they told us we were like trying out for American Idol, and they would like pick us, mm -hmm. and then we had to like do our audition, and like everybody took it seriously. Wow. Yeah, you just like whatever wherever they tell you, you like put yourself in those shoes. Oh. It's just weird. For the rapping stuff they used to do, were, were there like people you listened to at that part of your life, like rappers? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the first rappers I was ever inspired by was g -Eazy. Mm. I remember in like junior year, he came out with the song Been On, and there was this video where like he had a cigarette or a joint or something in his mouth, and it was like paused like this. But then all this, the, the, it was like a picture, but then mm -hmm. the smoke was going up. Oh. And it was like, that was the music video, and it was crazy to me. Um, and he just like told, told like his story in his music, which I really loved. And then at the same time, I really have always loved J. Cole, G. Easy, J. Cole, and definitely Tyler the Creator and Mac oh. Miller. Mac Miller, actually, I heard before G. Easy. So Mac Miller was the first one I was ever inspired by. Yeah. But yeah, Tyler definitely was like the first weirdo that I was just like, dude, this guy is weird as hell and it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and he was super vulgar, which I just love. <laughs> what made you decide to do like YouTube covers before? Justin Bieber. Oh. <laughs> Literally his bathroom covers and shit. like. I loved him. Mm -hmm. He was like the first person to ever really get like a real career from YouTube. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Whoa! Oh <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you did like a meetup back at Taco Bell with like yes. a few of your friends. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, there was about four people there. Um, yeah, that was my first time that I ever like tweeted a location and I was like, meet me here. I'm on my way to Canada, and I said like a random Taco Bell in Michigan, and I got there, and there was like, that was the first time that anybody's ever like sign this. It oh, was wow. crazy. How long after did you do that when you started putting out like your videos? Music. Yeah. I put out my videos like around that time, but the first like time I ever put out a song was a couple of years after that, maybe oh. like two years. Oh wow. Yeah. Did you already come out before that? Um, before the Taco Bell meetup? Yeah. No. <laughs> before Taco Bell, after Taco before Bell. Before Taco Bell or after? Because Taco Bell affected me in a big way. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. No, uh, I came out, came out junior year. Um, why I say this is because it was never like, I never had like this huge extravagant story or anything. I just tweeted and I was like, I think I'm gay. That was me coming yeah. out. And then to your parents? Yeah, my parents, like... Read Twitter, no. What? <laughs> Read it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> now that was the rest of my family. <laughs> no, I came out uh, to my dad junior year yeah. and my mom junior year. But I think that was, like, a year after the Taco Bell thing. Yeah. Maybe two. Was it easy to, like, let all these people know? Uh, my family, like, means a whole... I mean, I guess what's the best way to say it? I guess the best answer is I was really scared to tell my family just because like you just don't know how they're going to mm -hmm. react, especially when you just come to terms with it yourself. Um, my dad was like a great person to first find out because he asked me if I was. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, long story short, he knew like he could sense that I had feelings for someone, a girl. And so, yeah, he just asked me and. I told him and he was just so supportive, like, Lauren, no matter what, I'm always going to love you and like all this stuff. So that gave me like confidence right off the bat, oh, wow. you know, yeah. and not a lot of people get that. So I was super grateful of that. And 
I mean, that's that's just what made me feel confident in it myself. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. because he was like, this doesn't change you. Mm-hmm. It's just you. Like you're still the same you, and so that just made me accept it. You know. Mm-hmm. And what clicked to you to start motivational speaking back then? I think. My friends, like, in high school asked me for advice a lot, so um, I started making the motivational videos, which I only ended up making a few, um, but, fuck, okay, focus, started making the videos, okay, so I started making the videos because, I feel like just because, like, I recognize that people really just weren't being positive and they weren't believing in each other and like big dreams like couldn't be a thing where I lived and you know people just like couldn't comprehend the fact that I wanted to be like the superstar someday and so I just made them honestly to cheer on anybody else going through the same shit and to just like be the person that I needed. Do you think you got it from your dad like motivational speaking definitely he he was always like motivational inspirational quotes all the time and he always told me I was gonna be a leader someday and that I was a leader growing up like even when I was six he was like this is our leader Lauren oh yeah so he just always like planted that seed and so did my mom so yeah it just like kind of became a thing I just he spoke it into existence but towards the end, he didn't really like, like, going to do all these, like, speeches nah. at school. Nah, yeah. it was just too serious. Like, it was too quiet. Swear. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> cuss, couldn't, like, tell the real story, couldn't talk about girls and all that. So it was just like, nah, like, I need my own shit. I need my own stage, not the front of a classroom. And you were about to go to University of Indiana, right? Indiana University, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was about to become a therapist (laughs) I was about to become a therapist and you know have like an office where people booked sessions and what the fuck I don't know yeah that that was my plan and now I just realized that like I'm not a one-on-one I mean I just wanted a stage that's really it I just Mm -hmm. wanted like it to be bigger and crazier and tattoos and just like I wanted it to be more badass than just like I'm gonna help you today Mm -hmm. you know I just wanted to like live freely and like be happy in my own life chase my crazy ass dreams and like if people were inspired from that then that was it yeah and then did you start having you start like putting on your own songs and have management approach you're like what was the next step in your music at that point so pretty much when I was ending high school Uh, Right before graduation is when I decided that I didn't want to go to college and I didn't know what I was going to do yet, but my biggest thing was just like I wanted to inspire. So I thought of the what's like the one thing I can do without college? Like what don't I need a degree for? What can I just jump into? And I was like the one thing I what that I thought of was speaking. So that's when I looked up like TED Talks and that's when I found a TED Talk application online. So I filled it out and whatever, whatever, got that. After the TED talk, I got, I started getting asked to speak at schools. After that, like a month of that, I was over it and I wanted to make music. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a couple months after speaking at schools, um, I made the decision that I want to make music. And then I put out my first song like four days after I wrote it. Oh, and did, did that was two know, years like, ago. Did you already know like producers at that point? No, I found um, I found this guy named Earl Saga. He's from London, and he was just making beats on SoundCloud, and I love them. Um, and that's how that started. I just messaged him, and I was like, "Dude, I like your beats. Let me use one." And he he made like twenty more. We made like twenty more songs together after oh, wow. that. He was the only producer I knew until I moved to LA. So, yeah, he made a lot of my mm-hmm. shit. And then were a lot of your previous YouTube fans, like, translating into people who started listening to the yeah. music? Yeah. I think that's, that's how you like, got your music out there initially? Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of. I mean, I think, like, my biggest following was always on Twitter. And, like, I was always, like, this 
I always just like tweeted shit like all the time, like tweeted about my life, what I was doing, my thoughts, whatever, my feelings. And then Twitter basically like branched off into YouTube, but still my biggest following was Twitter. And so then when I made music, I just posted it on Twitter. Um, and that's really, I think, where people found it. That's where I've always had the most followers. Mm -hmm. And most, like, people, I think, paying attention. Yeah, and then, yeah. how long after did, like, Epic find you? Or were um, you, like, look, looking into a few, like, management or, like, labels? Basically, I made my first couple songs, independent, released my first independent EP, um, and that's when a few labels had reached out to me, just, like, um, I mean, pretty big labels, but I wasn't ready to do that, and that just like wasn't where I was at in my head. About a year later, I released my second independent project, and that's when um, Epic emailed my manager and asked what my plans were for the next couple months or years or whatever, and they flew me out to L.A. with like the rest of my team at the time, and yeah. I, I swear to you, like, right when I first heard from them, I thought I knew at least that I didn't want to sign and that I wanted to keep being independent. And I met with them and I could just tell that, like, they really got my vision and they knew what I wanted to be and they knew what I was and what I wasn't. And, yeah, they were cool with this, mm -hmm. so I was like, fuck it. Like, if I don't say now, if I don't say yes right now, like, when am I going to let people help me, mm -hmm. you know? And in between that time, were you working other jobs to sustain yourself? No, I was, um, I was selling a lot of merch throughout this time. Oh. And that was like my main thing. And then, yeah, I mean, I really wasn't focused on money, but like I had a little thrift store on the side too to kind of like keep me going um, and be able to afford studio time and stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did the PNB Rock song come about? Um, I was in the studio with First, FKI First. He worked on a lot of stuff on Post Malone's album, Stoney. Um, and he's super talented. And we were in the studio, and like right when I signed with Epic, we kind of agreed that Written in the Stars, which I had already released independently, but we wanted to re-release it with like a little extra flavor. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I went in with first and made like a little feature slot and I didn't know who was going to like feature on it but apparently him and uh, PMB had a session together and he played in the song and like PMB just really fucked with it so the, a couple of days later maybe like a week later I woke up and it was in my inbox and yes. from the second I played it like I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really I thought it was really good. It was like one of the best things I had heard from him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Why did you decide to like write all these letters? I think that was like one of the first ways that me and my supporters had ever really like connected on like such a deep level because when I when I got my P.O. box, um, people started just writing to me and like spilling their heart out to me. And I, I like I really think it's because people knew that I'm really accepting and like I'm pretty open-minded, and I don't think a lot of people are. Not saying that, like, whatever, but people see that, and, like, they feel that. I'm not judging anybody, and I'm not, like, trying to criticize anybody, so people would just, like, feel like I think I, I was, like, their safe person. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, super touched by that still, but when people would write me letters, like, I just knew how important that was to answer them and now it's at a point where I can't answer everything I get but you know I I do as much as I can and I think that it's just dope that people mm -hmm. people know that they can confide in another human yeah yeah how would you say your music has changed since the early songs you wrote um I think I just matured a lot in my feelings and I mean being like making music for three years now, you learn so much because like you make your first project, you know nothing. You make your second project, you kind of know some things. Mm -hmm. But then by like my third project that I'm making right now, like I feel like it's a whole new ball 
pog bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> it's a whole new ball game just because you know I have a lot more ability to to go in the studio and meet with different producers and and everything like that so I think now the music I'm making is more badass and it's just more me mm -hmm. yeah how would you say you've grown as a person since you were younger I've become much more respectful I like learned how to be respectful or I guess like the biggest thing I've learned is how to be a weirdo and like you know be badass but still be respectful and you know just how to like embrace who you are without like shutting down other people mm -hmm. and um yeah i become a lot more motivated and mm -hmm. like inspired in my own life too because i used to be super unmotivated i used to like be really like i don't give a shit about anything mentality and now i give a shit about pretty much everything um everything that i need to at least mm -hmm. so yeah yeah what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far i think i was worried for like a long time about finding my sound like i just felt like i'm like everybody i looked up to or whatever um really like knew what they were doing they knew production wise they knew lyrical and like they knew their flow and whatever mm -hmm. i just felt like i did not know my style or like my full vision i just knew like i want to inspire people but like i didn't know what i wanted to sound like and so my biggest challenge was just finding my lane and like really embracing who i am and musically whether it's singing or rapping or just like believing in myself that I can like really do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another thing, I mean, when I signed, it's so much different than being independent. When you're independent, you can release shit whenever you want, however you want. You don't have to go through a million people just to do like one thing, which I'm endlessly grateful that I signed and I'm so happy that I signed, but it was a lot to like learn you know, mm -hmm. realizing that like not everything can just be like at the snap of a finger or push of a button. It's like everything is a process. Everything has a plan. Everything is like perfectly constructed. And yeah, it was just a learning process. Mm -hmm. What does love mean to you? Love? Yeah. <laughs> um, love. <laughs> I've never been asked that. <laughs> What does love mean to me? Love is just anything that makes you, for one second, okay, this is gonna be so cheesy. <laughs> just for one second, it's whatever just makes you forget about all the bad things in the world. And for that one second, I like your shoes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and for that one second, you know, you just let the happiness pour in. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a person or a thing, whatever it is, like when I'm skating, I feel like just love. I mm -hmm. feel like I am love in that moment because I don't give a fuck about <laughs> nothing but that. What are the meanings behind your tattoos? <laughs> what one? Or your favorite, I don't know. You do have My favorites. favorite? Um, I think something cool. <laughs> I think something cool is like a lot of the tattoos I get, I picked out of a box. Mm -hmm. Like this one, this one, this one, this one this one and this one and this one I all picked out of like a random box mm -hmm. so I didn't know what it was before I picked it out it's just called the get what you get box in Indiana uh, where I'm from and yeah I think it's fucking dope to get a random tattoo because whatever you picked that means like that's what the universe wanted you to get yeah. <laughs> Lost, I, yeah. I sometimes think that, that like someday I'm gonna be a grandma with this on my hand. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Cool. <laughs> Last, yeah. Yeah. Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? Damn! Doing whatever the fuck I want and not <laughs> giving a fuck about the consequence. Um I want to just be the definition of like 
I mean, I don't want to be. I think I am the definition of just, like, literally, I hate be yourself, but just, like, I am myself, and I don't let a single fucker get in my way. Yeah, I you love know? that. Yeah. Thank you so much. This yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.